just by brief introduction, I basically do um, a lot of the training for Barnett, and I'm an independent consultant, so I do training for other independently and for other firms as well. My background is that I've been in clinical research for well over 30 years, started as a coordinator, moved into the monitoring arena, where we're going to talk about a lot of the monitoring models today, basically, then went into study management in a variety of roles, quality oversight. What I focus on now is really training and quality oversight, those two pieces that I really enjoyed best. So coming back to the monitoring piece, we're going to talk today about risk-based monitoring and strategies for effective remote monitoring. They're two different things, risk-based monitoring and remote monitoring, two different things, but we are going to look at these. Okay, so what we hope to learn today through this particular training is we hope to come away with the idea that we can describe approaches and techniques for effective remote data review. So again, remember, reviewing data remotely is not the same as risk-based monitoring, but we're going to talk about that as well, the remote data review. Explain techniques for query writing to ensure clear communication of issues. We're also going to look at implementing strategies to identify problem areas and how to maximize time on site following your remote monitoring. Here's the little, the little guy at the computer with the person looking over his shoulder, and it says, the computer says, I need to upgrade my brain to be compatible with its new software. Okay, so basically this little uh, graphic, this is when I knew my, my cue here wasn't here because my cue here was to tell you the story about my husband who is um, not very computer literate and he's one of these people who will always be, you know, can you come here and show me how to do this? Can you show me how to do that? And, you know, the whole thing is when we're looking at these, we're always, as a monitor, you're kind of the tech person who always is the one that the site will reach out to when they're having issues. If you have remote data capture going on, whether you're supplying the laptop or whether it's a system that they have on their own computers, you're kind of the, even though you're not the tech person, you are the tech person for that site and they generally reach out to you. And so it says here, I need to upgrade my brain to be compatible with the new software. And don't we find that, you know, with the technology changing so quickly all the time, that we are sometimes very hard pressed to, to keep up with things, and we have new systems. So sometimes when we're rolling out these systems for data capture, we, of course, have to be trained on it first as monitors, but then when we go out, we have to have the mindset that not only are we trained on how to use it, but we have to know how to explain to the sites and how to troubleshoot various mechanisms of the new processes that we're using. So haven't we all kind of sort of been there in terms of where you feel a little lost and again guiding your 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 sites and your coordinators especially through the processes of these new systems that you might be using. So back in the day of like a hundred percent source document verification, we checked every data point. Okay? And I can remember doing that when I started. When risk based monitoring with risk based monitoring we need to assess our risk and figure out what we really need to source verify and what is minor and it's not really worth the time and effort and expense that we're putting into every single data point. For example, if we were to look at, I remember back when I was a coordinator, we would get lab results from a central lab and we'd have to enter that into a case report form. And at that time it was all paper. And so you'd be transcribing all of these data points from the central lab to the uh, paper case report from. Now today that sounds very archaic because we have these central systems, they can just be uploaded. Why would you waste the time in transferring all those numbers and also leaving yourself open to transposing certain numbers so that in term, terms of maybe um, a lab report you, you misplaced the decimal or you misread something and reversed two numbers. Those kinds of things would be considered not high risk. In other words, we have that central lab report. We can easily find that if somebody has transposed a number, it's not so critical that we can, you know, we can find that, we can correct it. Now, I would say like if we're looking at vital signs, sometimes maybe we're not going to check those vital signs so well to make sure that they're transferred appropriately from the source document into the actual case report form, and this can be in an electronic form or paper form. Of course, if this is a cardiovascular study, then, you know, of course, we do want to pay attention to those blood pressures. But again, if we're, we may not want to look at 
every single vital sign in every single visit on every single patient. We may be doing more of a spot check to make sure that those things are in place. Where other things that we really need to focus our energy on, for example, adverse events, concomitant meds, those are where we want to put our focus on and make sure that those are all captured and make sure those are appropriately reported. So again, it's it's the usually it's the project manager, study manager, project team getting together to decide what are the important points that we must have. They may be the critical points that will make or break your your study and really uh, kind of be robust in terms of what they need to report at the end of the day for the drug. There are other things that maybe okay, this is human error. It's not such a big deal, and it's not going to impact safety to the subjects or to the uh, actual drug approval. So that, again, is made, decisions are made up front by the project team, and that should be communicated out to the monitors in terms of what needs to be checked 100% and what can be in this reduced monitoring kind of a model. Let's take a look at the current practices. We have a really wide range of, of practices right now. We have the periodic frequent visits with 100% source data verification, which is the most common model and the one we've used for years and years and years. 